everyone, and welcome to Kirill Court here at Jadwin Gym. And tonight's matchup between the George Mason Patriots and your Princeton Tigers. Here are tonight's starting lineups. First for George Mason, at guard, a 6'3 senior from Largo, Maryland. Number zero, Brian Allen. Also at guard, a 6'4 senior from Mount Vernon, New York. Number 10, Sherrod Wright. At guard, a 5'11 junior from South Jamaica, New York. 13, Corey Edwards. At one forward, a 6'8 senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Number two, Johnny Williams. And forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Serbia. Number 10, Marco Goyan Icic. The assistant coaches for George Mason are Roland, Roland Ewing, Chris Kreider, and Eric Skeeters. And head coach of the Patriots in his third season is Paul Ewing. Now the starting lineup for your Princeton Tigers. And guard, a 6'3 senior from Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. Number two, Jimmy Sherborne. At guard, a 6'5 junior from Bowie, Maryland. Number 12, Ben Hazel. At one forward, a 6'4 freshman from Laura Park, New Jersey. Number 10, Spencer Weiss. Senior from Hartsville, PA, 24, Will Barrett. And at four to six, eight, sophomore from Florida, South Carolina, number 30, Tom At 16, Dujanic, a sophomore from Serbia, and Williams, a redshirt senior from Memphis. And on the other side for Princeton, it's the same starting five that the Tigers have had in each of their first four games this season. And that means that Jimmy Sherburn is the starting point guard. Sherburn, a 6'3 senior from Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. And he's joined at the backcourt by the freshman sensation for Princeton so far this year, Spencer Weiss, a 6'4", 180-pound freshman from Florham Park in New Jersey, just about an hour away here from the Princeton campus. Ben Hazel also starts in the backcourt for the Tigers. Hazel coming off of an 11.7 rebound performance at Rice on Saturday. Hazel is 6'5", junior from Bowie, Maryland. Hans Brace in the front court for the Tigers, the 6'8", sophomore from Germany, and Will Barrett rounds out the starting five for Princeton. Barrett, the 6'10", senior from Hartsville, Pennsylvania. Princeton steps out on a Pete Carrell court wearing its home white jerseys. Princeton in orange across the front. The numbers underneath and on the back outlined in black. A P on the sides of the shorts. George Mason out there in its road. Green jerseys with gold numbering. George Mason across the front and the numbers in the middle. It's George Mason that wins the tip and right off of the tip a traveling violation is called. The Patriots go from left to right, and now it's Princeton basketball as the Tigers march from left to right. Five seconds in here at Jadwin Gymnasium. Second half of a doubleheader after the Tiger ladies lost earlier this evening to St. Joseph's. Princeton with the basketball on the right side. The Tigers space the floor with only Brace in the middle. He receives 10 feet away, right baseline. Skip pass, far corner to Barrett. Slings one up top. For Hazel, dribble handoff with Weiss. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Sherburn plays give and go with Brace. Sherburn with four on the shot clock. A leaner from 10 feet away on the right side is good. Used the backboard. And Princeton takes a 2-0 lead. Well, George Mason's loss at Iona on Saturday, believe it or not, the Gales led the Patriots 14-0. George Mason would go down 34-5 in that first half and eventually lose or eventually trail by as many as 32 before losing by 16, a game not necessarily that close. A pass to a cutter down low, and at the left block, Byron Allen's shot is knocked out of bounds and possession to Princeton. And it was last off of Allen's leg. Full court pressure from the Patriots here in the game's opening minute, and the inbound pass is stolen, but an offensive foul. It was stolen in the far corner by Sherrod Wright, but on his way to the tin, Jimmy Sherburn draws a charge. The foul against Wright, his first, and George Mason's first. Here in half number one, we've played one minute, six seconds. It's Princeton to George Mason, nothing. Here in the first ever meeting between these two schools that are separated by about 200 miles. Brace, left block, with the right hand. He scoops it in. 
Four nothing Tigers. George Mason looks to push. Patriots on the go and a shot from the right side. No good for Corey Edwards, the point guard. Tigers collect the rebound. Hazel near corner, fakes a three. Passes it in the far corner for Barrett. Tigers swinging around the perimeter. And 25 feet away, it's Brace. And the Tigers' best player in the post who also has the range to step outside. He knocked down three trifectas in the win Saturday at Rice. 13 on the shot clock. Sherburn has it to our right. Handoff for Brace with five on the shot clock. Brace gives to a cutting Barrett. Right block, three on the shot clock. The pass outside is deflected. It's last off of George Mason. There's only one second left on this shot clock. Two minutes into this opening half, and Princeton leads George Mason 4-0. Quick substitution for the Patriots. Tell you about it in a moment. Inbound to Barrett. What on the shot clock. Hoists a three. It's short, and the rebound comes down to the Patriots. And Green from right to left. Allen controls the dribble. Hands off to Edwards, the junior from Queens. To the foul line. He hands off. Off the bench, it's Vaughn Gray. George Mason is without three regular players, including two starters tonight. At midcourt on the Tiger logo, the head of the Tigers. A new surface here for Kirill Court this season. Five on the shot clock is Edwards changes speeds, drives into the paint, puts up a shot, and is fouled. Knocked down in the black paint just underneath the Princeton University seal. And Edwards will get two freebies. First foul against Princeton. It comes with 17-25 remaining in half number one. And that foul is charged against Ben Hazel. The Tigers 6-5 swing guard is first. TJ Bray for Princeton goes over to the scorer's table set to check in. Here after the first free throw is good for Edwards, who so far on the season is shooting 91% from the line. Best for George Mason. Bray comes in as Will Barrett heads out. So one senior in for another. Tigers with some less height there on the court now as Bray's 6'5", Barrett 6'10". Second free throw for Edwards around and out. And Bray grabs the carom for the Tigers. Princeton from left to right in white. 4-1, Tigers with the lead. 17-15 to go, first half. Brace setting a screen for Sherburn in front of the George Mason bench far side. And there's a foul on the floor called against George Mason. Second foul against the Patriots in this half, and it's the first against Corey Edwards. Bray inbounds in front of the George Mason bench. Give and go with Brace, and it's Bray who lays it in on the left block. TJ Bray, who again missed the first three games of the season with a hand injury, healthy enough now. And he gives Princeton a 6-1 lead. George Mason on the left side. Pass down low. He's deflected away by Brace. Goes over to the Tigers bench. And it's last off of Princeton. An inbound underneath for George Mason. First to substitution. And Sherrod Wright, who started and came out for a moment, he comes back in. And Corey Edwards, the point guard, is off. So no true point guard on the floor for George Mason with 16.52 remaining in half number one. And Princeton up 6-1. At the foul line, Johnny Williams, a big fella, passes on the ground. And from the left block, it's in for Marco Gucinich. 6-3, the Tigers doubling up the Patriots early on. Princeton ball right side, and it's poked out of bounds by George Mason. Sherrod right with active hands. Right, the 6-4 redshirt senior, the leading scorer for George Mason. Also a good defender. Bray inbounds, 29 on the shot clock for Princeton, throws it in the backcourt for Hazel. Now he lobs forward for Bray, give and go. Hazel in the lane, shovels it off, and a two-handed throwdown for Hans Brace. Eight to three, Tigers. Brace with a thunderous finish off a pretty pass from Ben Hazel. Believe it or not, here in game number five, that's Hazel's first assist of the season, but he looked like a point guard distributing. George Mason now on the left side, right, gets a defender, Bray in the air, bounce pass, right block, Gujicic, and there's a foul called on the floor, it's Gujicic there at 6'8", backing down, Spencer Weissich, 6'4", and the Tigers freshman commits a foul with 16.06 to go in the first half, Princeton up 8-3. Weiss now comes out of the game, and he's replaced by Denton Kuhn. Inbound to the left block, and Johnny Williams goes up, and Williams is fouled in the act of shooting. And the Patriots redshirt senior gets two free throws. 
Johnny Williams has two shots. 8-3 Princeton, 16-04 left first half. That foul called against Hans Brace. And the Tigers, sophomore out of Germany and the first free throw for Williams who on the season is now four for five at the line. This is the first, still one more with 16-04 to go. And half number one and he sinks it. And with the make, George Mason now sets up full court pressure defense. Eight to four, Tigers lead the Patriots. Inbound in front of the Tigers bench to Kuhn. Bounce back to Bray. He throws back to Kuhn and the Tigers beat the pressure. On the right side, Hazel guns a pass for Sherbert. Back to Hazel, left wing three, no good. Kuhn, the offensive rebound for the Tigers. He tosses it out for Sherbert, who shot fakes on a three and distributes to Brace. Hazel moves away from the ball. It's a new shot clock here for Princeton. Up 8-4 with 15 and a half to go in the first half. Tiger showing some patience on this possession. Kuhn in the far corner, up top to Sherburn. Shot fake, drive, pass, far corner. Kuhn a three, no good. And the rebound brought down by Wright for George Mason. Princeton coming off of a game Saturday at Rice in which the Tigers made 10 three-pointers, attempted 31. Quick shot on the other side, no good for Byron Allen. And the rebound to Princeton. Hazel pushes it down court. He misses a layup on the right side. And George Mason with the rebound. This game starting to pick up the pace here. And that probably favors George Mason. Although the Tigers on the season have averaged more points per game than George Mason has, 71 to 67. Left elbow, a leaner no good for right. He's been cold to start. Brace the rebound and outlet pass for Hazel. Ahead of the pack, right-handed layup, no good. He hits the deck, no foul. Rebound George Mason. Up and down we go with 14.35 to go first half. Princeton eight, George Mason four. Right left wing, lobs one down low, and the intercept for Brace and Princeton. He bounces it to Hazel as the Tigers slow things down. Princeton has to be pleased with the start here. Tigers three and one, George Mason four and one. George Mason has been prone to slow starts in games. Told you about the performance against Iona. Left side three is good for TJ Bray. He was wide open and he makes it count for three. The first triple for the Tigers who lead the Patriots 11-4. Now George Mason on the left side and we have a whistle away from the ball. Foul was called with 13.58 to go in the first half, and Princeton leading George Mason 11 to four. The foul goes against George Mason, Johnny Williams, his first and George Mason's third of the half. So our first timeout, Princeton 11, George Mason four with 13.58 to go in the first half. You're listening to Princeton Tigers basketball on the Nelligan Sports Network, 103.3 WPRB. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching. Where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future. Where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service. Where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans. A university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices. All without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programs. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League digital network. Three Princeton coaches will be chosen to compete for this coveted award, and the winning coach will receive $1,000 towards his or her team's general athletic fund. John Rogers credits Hall of Fame coach Pete Carrill for teaching him the time-tested values of patience, focus, and hard work. Now the foundation for success at Ariel. Back in play, Princeton with the ball on the right side in its home white jerseys, leading George Mason 11-4 with 13-40 remaining in half number one. 
Chris Clement, backup point guard, the senior, into the game off the bench for the first time. He handles the point. Princeton has only 10 on the shot clock as Hans Brace has it high left wing. A bounce pass down low for Kuhn is intercepted. Long pass, a home run pass. He is intercepted for George Mason as Will Barrett stepped in front. Princeton again in possession on the right side. Brace, chest pass for Kuhn. He's double teamed, finds Brace at the left elbow. His cross-court pass is intercepted, and George Mason now goes from right to left. Sherrod Wright picked that one off, and George Mason, led by head coach Paul Hewitt, who calls out his set from the far sideline. The Patriots are in their offense. It's 11-4, Princeton leads George Mason. Less than 13 minutes to go in half number one. And off the bench, Patrick Holloway. He's a 6-1 guard for George Mason. Bounce pass towards the right block. Chris Clement gets a hand on it for Princeton. We have a tie-up and a jump ball. Check that. George Mason out of bounds. It's Princeton ball. How about that? Chris Clement had 6-2. A generous listing at that. Down on the ground against George Mason, big man. Anali Okoloji, who stands at 6'8". So Clement giving up at least six inches there, but the hustle rewarded as Okoloji was out of bounds. So Princeton now with the ball on the right side. Into the game for the first time, backup center Pete Miller, and his pass to the paint for a cutting. Kuhn is knocked away. Both sides here all of a sudden very sloppy. Early on, it's been Princeton shooting at 50%, but a couple of turnovers in a row. And now on the left side, a pull-up jumper is good for Allen, the 6'3 senior. It's a very veteran George Mason club. At pressures full court here against Princeton. Kuhn beats it himself, drives in the lane, misses a layup with the right hand, but is fouled. Stops the clock with 12.08 remaining in half number one. And Princeton leading George Mason 11 to six. Fourth foul against visiting George Mason. And it's the first against the guard Allen. So two free throws now for Denton Kuhn, who's been the leading scorer for Princeton through the first four games this season. Despite coming off of the bench in now all five contests, he's been averaging better than 13 points. And he makes the first free throw. Still one more coming. Princeton 12, George Mason 6. Tigers have Chris Clement on the floor right now at one guard. Joined in the backcourt by TJ Bray and Denton Kuhn. And then both Will Barrett at 6'10", and Pete Miller at 6'10", in the front court. And Princeton defensively after Kuhn makes the second to push the lead to seven. Princeton now in a 2-3 zone, a la Syracuse and Jim Beheim as the Tigers try to throw off George Mason. Aloy is a three-point shooting threat. He's a bounce pass down low, left block, and a foul against the Tigers. It was Okoloji who went up, and he gets knocked down to the floor. Foul goes against Will Barrett. It's his first in Princeton's fourth of the half, and it brings us to another pause. With 11.46 to go, first half, it's Princeton 13, George Mason 6. On the Princeton Tigers, Nelligan Sports Network, 103.3 WPRB. Enjoy classic elegance in the perfect location at the higher regions in Princeton, ideally situated close to train station and Route 1. For more information or to make reservations, call them at 609-987-1234. All right, we've set up our gear. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching, where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future, where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service, where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans, a university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all-new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices, all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programs. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League digital network. It's two free throws for George Mason. 
And there's six eight junior, a redshirt junior from Brooklyn, Anale Okoloji, who has two free throws. Princeton leads 13 to six. And the first free throw for the 55% foul shooter is no good. Early on, the Tigers shooting 50% from the field, five of 10, only one for four from behind the arc though. Okoloji makes the second, and against the full court pressure, it's Denton Kuhn who dribbles into the four court. Princeton 13, George Mason seven, 1140 remaining in the first half. Van Hazel, a bounce pass to Pete Miller, the freshman from Massachusetts. Dribbles with the left hand, hands off to Kuhn, pumps on a three left wing, instead slings for Kuhn here at the foul line, looking for Bray, 12 on the shot clock, and Kuhn whistled for a travel. Harassing man-to-man -man defense on that trip down, and with Sherrod right all in the face of Kuhn, and it forces the turnover for Princeton, that's already turnover number five. George Mason, meanwhile, has coughed it up six times. So neither side crisp early on. As we said, George Mason is without its backup point guard, Marquise Moore, who is out with an ankle injury he suffered in practice the other day. George Mason is also without two other guys who they had penciled into the starting lineup at the beginning of the year. John Allridge, who last year was the second leading scorer for George Mason, and then Eric Copes, he's out, suspended for the first six games of the year. George Mason with the ball on the left side, and a baseline jumper is good for Brian Allen. Allen's Jay cuts the Princeton lead to four, 13-9. We're inside of 11 left in half number one. Brace outside the arc, left wing, picks up his dribble. He's pressured by Jalen Jenkins, who's 6'5 and lengthy. Brace works his way out of trouble by finding Hazel on the Tiger logo at center court. Hazel now cuts to the basket off a of feed from Bray, and Hazel lays it in off the backboard. 15-9, Princeton. George Mason wastes no time from right to left. Gerard Wright feeds into the corner. Allen tries a three and connects. Five straight there for Allen. He leads George Mason with seven. Princeton sets up in the half court on the right side. Brace throws in front of the George Mason bench to Bray. No look pass Kood. Open three. No good. Offensive put back Whoa. and off the glass from the left side for Will Barrett. Barrett came out of nowhere and his putback puts Princeton up by five, 17 12, more than halfway through half number one. Edwards directing traffic at the foul line, shovels a pass on the left wing for Allen. It's Edwards now who goes around a high screen from Jenkins and dribbles in front of the Princeton bench. 15 on the shot clock for the visiting Patriots. Jenkins uses the bounce, works his way to the right block. Five on the shot clock, he kicks it out to Allen. Three as he hoists a left wing three. He's knocked down, no good, no whistle. And the Princeton rebound down to Brace. He bounces for Bray, who dribbles across the black stripe at half court. 9.15 left, half one, Princeton up five. Barrett, a triple is good from the left wing. Will Barrett with his first three-pointer of the night, shooting 50% from behind the arc so far this season. And that triple, Gives Princeton its largest lead yet, 20 to 12, with less than nine to go before the break. Allen to the foul line, nice pass down low and a reverse layup on the right block is good for Sherrod Wright. For Wright, who's the leading scorer, that's his first field goal. Two points now for the guy who's averaging better than 15 points a night. Princeton beats the full court pressure. Now Barrett tries a near corner three, no good. And the rebound down to the point guard, Edwards. He outlets on the far side for Allen. Euro steps into the paint, kicks out Edwards. He tries a three, short, and Barrett skies in for the Princeton rebound. 8-20 first half, it's Princeton up 20 to 14 on George Mason. Tigers at three and one on the season. Bray drives right side, and he gets it to go off the backboard. TJ Bray so deceptive that time, looking as if he was going to pass, stutter stepped, and took it all the way to the rack. 22-14, Princeton, George Mason ball left side. Edwards barks out the signals as he bounces hip high with the left hand. Guns a pass on the high left wing for Sherrod Wright. 
He dribbles with the left as Barrett comes out to guard him. Princeton now in a 1-3-1 zone. And there's a whistle off ball. It's going to come against the Tigers. Will Barrett. His second and Princeton's fifth in this first half. Stops the clock with 7.46 to go before the break. Princeton 22, George Mason 14 on the Princeton Tigers. Nelligan Sports Network 103.3 WPRB. Stay Princeton. Stay you. Stay at the new Crown Plaza Princeton. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching, where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future, where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service, where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans, a university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all-new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices, all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programs. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League Digital Network. Team for its continued support of our varsity programs. Homewood Suites by Hilton Princeton makes you feel like you're at home. Welcome back inside Jadwin Gymnasium. The band on hand here. Students will have classes off tomorrow, and then of course Thursday, the Thanksgiving holiday. So a nice night to just take in some hoops and avoid the lousy weather outside. 7.46 to go, first half. It's Princeton 22 and George Mason 14. Patriots in green and gold with the ball on the left side. Tigers so far shooting 56% from the field. George Mason at a 45% rate. To Rod Wright, shot faked, right side drives, right lane, all the way to the rim, and he puts it in off glass. There's an aggressive take right there by Sharon Wright, the leading scorer for George Mason this season again with 15 points per game. He gets two right there, it's 22-16. Man-to-man -man defense from George Mason as Patriots head coach Paul Hewitt challenges his team to step up defensively. Sherburn in at midcourt, bounce pass, far corner, Bray slings it near corner, wide open, three for Weiss, no good. And the defensive boy down to George Mason. It's Wright who has it. He'll take it across the timeline. Passes on the far side for Allen. Up top, left wing, three for Wright, too strong. Offensive board knocked around and stolen away. Princeton basketball, TJ Bray controls. Chest pass, right wing for Kuhn. Drives into the lane, puts one up, good, plus a foul. Finger roll, layup with the right hand for Denton Kuhn, who now has a shot at an old-fashioned three-point play. That layup extends Princeton's lead to 24-16 with 6.39 remaining before halftime. And now Kuhn, a chance to make it three. Kuhn, only 61% at the line so far this year, but it's a swish. And now Princeton up by as many as it has been all night, 25-16 with 6.39 to go in half number one. Princeton defensively right now is Jimmy Sherburn, who will guard the ball handler, Corey Edwards. Spencer Weissen at one guard, along with TJ Bray, Denton Kuhn, and then the lone post presence in Hans Brace. Gujanich, bounce pass, left block, a shot no good for Okoloji, and a tie up on the rebound. Possession arrow gives it to Princeton. Great hustle that time from Denton Kuhn, who got right in the mix there, giving up a couple of inches and well, at least about 20 pounds against Jujanic. And it's Princeton ball now from left to right, already up by nine. George Mason won 22 games a year ago and all the way to the College Basketball Invitational Finals before losing to Santa Clara. And we have a foul called 
about 30 feet away from the hoop is Princeton Spencer Weiss, who is just dribbling, and there's a handshake. Remember, that's the point of emphasis for officials here in the 2013-2014 season in an effort to try to really create more space and have a less physical game. Fifth foul, or make it sixth foul of the half against George Mason. Princeton with an inbound near side. Jimmy Sherburn at the controls, goes around a high screen right wing from Brace. Dumps it into the near corner for Bray. One on one against Okoloji. It's Bray straight away. Finds Weiss, dribbles into the paint, kicks it out, far corner, three-pointer for Sherburn, too strong, and the rebound tipped by Sherrod, right for George Mason, and he takes the carom. Right into the front court, slows it down, gives to Allen, thought about a straight on three, instead drives, and a foul called on the floor. Sixth foul of the half against Princeton. Both sides now have committed six fouls, so from here on out, both sides will be in the bonus. And that foul goes against Hans Brace, his second and now he comes out of the game in favor of Pete Miller. 6'10 in for 6'10, but a little bit less experience and muscle with Miller on the floor instead of Brace. Princeton also subs out Jimmy Sherburn as Ben Hazel comes back in, a better shooter. 5.29 to go before halftime. Princeton leads by nine. Inbound on the baseline. Thrown out to the Serbian native, Gujanic. Ryan Allen bounces in front of the Princeton bench. Leaps in the air, throws a cross-court pass to Patrick Holloway, who travels as he drives left side. An incredulous Holloway looks over to his bench saying, did I do that? And sure enough, he did. With 5.13 to go before the break, and Princeton leading George Mason 25-16. Both sides so far haven't been clean in controlling the basketball. Kuhn. Hip high with the left hand as Princeton works it around the perimeter from near to far. It's Hazel who gives to a posting Bray. Rifles a pass, right block for Miller. Backing down an undersized Allen, and he puts it in with the left hand. Beautiful post work right there by the freshman Pete Miller. Saw that he had a mismatch. At 6'10", he was being guarded by the 6'3", Allen, and he took him to the hoop. 27-16, a double-digit lead for the Tigers. Bounce pass into the post for George Mason. It's a right-handed hook for Gujanic. 27-18, Princeton up nine with the ball. 4.25 to go in the first half. Tigers play with three around the arc. It's Weiss who throws an over-the-head pass for Bray. Far corner, Hazel, jab step. With 15 on the shot clock, Princeton works it. Left post for Kuhn who gets away with a push off. Gives up top to Miller, spins, no look pass for a cutting. Bray who lays it in with the right hand. Timeout, George Mason. Princeton 29, George Mason 18 with 4.01 left in the first half. We're going to keep it right here as Princeton back up by 11 and getting a big contribution off the bench from Pete Miller. Two trips down, Miller with a nice left-handed running hook shot. That time, Miller with a great assist to a cutting T.J. Bray. And for Miller, a 6'10", 225-pound freshman from Winchester, Massachusetts. He's played in the first four games of the season for the Tigers, averaging about seven minutes, but not the most meaningful of minutes. Here, get some time with Hans Brace already with 2,000. Mitch Henderson trying to avoid Brace picking up a third before the end of the first half. It's Miller providing a nice boost off the bench. In the first four games of the season, Miller has averaged a couple of points and a little more than one rebound. Coming off of his best outing yet this year on Saturday at Rice, he had five points and three boards. Got to see some extended time as the Tigers at that, in that game led by as many as 25. After the Paul Hewitt timeout, George Mason ball. Wright weaves his way into the paint, gets caught in the air and throws it away. Stolen by Hazel for the Tigers. Princeton from left to right. Chris Clement in off the bench at guard. He gives to Weiss behind the back pass. High right wing for Miller. Now it's Weiss around a Miller screen. Beautiful pass, right block. Miller down low and he's called for a travel. And it brings us to a timeout with 3.37 to go. First half. Princeton 19, George Mason 18. Great start for Mitch Henderson's Tigers, and you're listening to it on the Princeton Tigers, Nelligan Sports Network, 103.3 WPRB. Brendan, each making their first ever visit to Jadwin Jim. 
Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching, where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future, where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service, where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans, a university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices, all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programming. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League digital network. Hey, Tiger fans, here's a game-winning tip for quick and easy banking from First Choice Bank. Mercer County residents can now open an account online and take advantage of First Choice Bank's great rates, personal or business, checking or savings. Your new account is just a few clicks away at firstchoice-bank.com. John Nolan back here inside Jadwin, Princeton 29, George Mason 18, 335 left. First half, the Tigers are shooting 57% from the field, despite only two of nine from three-point land. George Mason at 46%, but the Patriots have turned the ball over eight times. It's Patriots ball on the left side, working in the post. It's Gujanich who misses the shot over Miller. Offensive board for George Mason, and it's a putback for Sherrod Wright. Sherrod Wright to score. He'll get his points inside or out. That time crashing the glass. He has six. High man so far for George Mason is Allen with seven. Spencer Weiss, an ill-advised pass stolen by right top of the key. And he dunks it uncontested. And a timeout called by Mitch Henderson and Princeton. 30-second timeout. And as the Tigers try to regroup after a quick 4-0 spurt for George Mason. Clock is stopped with three minutes remaining before half. Princeton 29, George Mason 22. And so we mentioned that George Mason has been sloppy eight turnovers. Well, right there, Princeton just committed its seventh turnover. For the Tigers so far, it's been a rather balanced attack offensively. T.J. Bray, the high man with nine points off the bench. Denton Kuhn has five, as does Will Barrett. Hans Brace with four, Jimmy Sherburn with a deuce, and Pete Miller with two points, too. So far, Spencer Weiss and Chris Clement have played, but haven't scored. After the timeout, full court man-to-man -man defense from George Mason. Princeton gets it into Jimmy Sherburn, and the senior point guard orchestrates the offense into the front court on the right side. Inside of three minutes before the half, and Princeton's up by seven. Tigers spacing the floors. Kuhn away from the ball, goes around a Miller screen. Meanwhile, it's Bray who holds the Tigers logo at midcourt. Back and forth between Bray and Sherbert. Couple of senior leaders for Princeton. It's Bray who drives right side, gets to the block, rifles a pass with five on the shot clock. It's Sherburn up top, lobs for Miller as the shot clock expires. Miller puts it in, sticking it in off the right glass. And Princeton back up by nine, 31-22. Using about 34.9 seconds on the 35 second ticker that trip. At the foul line, Bukaloji lobs it up top for right. Rod Wright, the senior from Mount Vernon, had a disappointing homecoming at Iona on Saturday, scored 12 in the first half, and then was blanked in half number two. 10 on the shot clock, broke Ologi, who spins into the lane and has it poked away, out of bounds, off the black padding underneath the hoop, and it'll stick with George Mason. 151 left in the half, eight on the shot clock. Substitution for George Mason as Ologi comes out, and he is replaced by Johnny Williams. So that's a bench player out and a starter back in, both at 6'8". Inbound to the far corner, it's a three-point host. No good for Gray, and an offensive board though, taken down by George Mason and Johnny Williams. And Williams whistled for a travel. 144 left in the half. 
Both sides have committed six fouls so far, so in case there's any fouling here in the final minute 40, it'll mean a one and one. Sherburn lobs over on the far side for Kuhn, takes a couple of dribbles towards the top of the key. In between the rings, Hazel feeds on the right wing for Sherbert. Princeton plays with four on the perimeter, only Pete Miller standing at the foul line. 15 on the shot clock. It's Kuhn, right block, and he scores using the backboard. Off an assist from TJ Bray. Once again, Bray is such a threat with the ball, drawing multiple defenders, and then finding the open teammate. Steal at midcourt. It's Ben Hazel all alone, and he jams it with two hands. 35-22, Princeton leads George Mason. The Ivy over the A-10 with one minute to go in the first half. Largest lead yet for the Tigers. Allen spins to the foul line, up top, three-pointer off to the right for Gujanich, and the rebound to the Tigers. An outlet up ahead for Hazel, who is cherry-picking, and he's fouled on the floor against Gujanich with 45.9 seconds to go in half one. And now... It'll be one and one for Ben Hazel. Uh, Princeton Jr., who missed last year, but has started all four games, now five games so far this season, and is coming off of a nice performance at Rice when he had 11 points and a career high, seven rebounds, a one and one, and he knocks down the first with a friendly bounce from the rim. One more still coming here for Hazel, who's the grandson of the late Pro Football Hall of Famer, John Mackey. And the second free throw for Hazel is good as well. He comes out of the game now to his standing ovation as Chris Clement subs in. So the Tigers lose a little bit of height and scoring, but have better ball handling for the final 40 seconds of the first half. It's 37-22 Princeton. A great start for the Tigers. 10 second differential between the shot and game clock. Down right post, Sherrod Wright working against Bray, backing him down, spins, right handed, shot off glass. No good, but he drew a foul. foul number five, foul goes against Bray. It's only his first in Princeton's seventh of the half. It's two free throws for Wright, who is in the act of shooting. Remember, coming up, by a our halftime show brought to you by Robert Wood Johnson Health System, the official hospital Davis. system of Princeton University Davis. Athletics. Also Spencer First free throw good for Wright, who so far this season has shot 64% at the charity stripe. Still one more coming. It's 37-23, Princeton at home. Here a couple of nights before Thanksgiving. Off to a good start against George Mason, a squad that's four and one. Second free throw is short, and Bray snares the Princeton board. Shot clock is turned off. Princeton looks to hold for one as Jimmy Sherburn puts up his right index finger to indicate so. 12 seconds to go in the half. Tigers trying to add on a 14-point lead. With eight seconds to go, Bray drives right wing, kicks up top. Kuhn wide open, three, he hits. And that does it for the first half. Princeton goes into the break with a 40 to 23 lead over George Mason. There's a big time trifecta to go into the locker room. So Princeton with its largest lead of the half, 40 to 23 after 20 minutes. Another slow start for George Mason, but Princeton's not going to complain. For the Tigers with a 17 point first half lead, Stay tuned, we've got the Robert Wood Johnson Health System Halftime Show coming up next on the Princeton Tigers Elegant Sports Network, 103.3 WPRB. Cheeburger Cheeburger located at 182 Nassau Street welcomes back the Princeton Tigers for another great year. Stop by and build your own burger. Or... Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching, where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service, where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans, a university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. 
Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices, all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programming. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League digital network. Inside Jadwin Gymnasium with the band playing in the background. At the half, it's Princeton 40, George Mason 23. John Nolan welcoming you in now to the Robert Wood Johnson Health System halftime show. We'll take a look at some of the first half numbers here with Princeton up by 17 points. How about this? The Tigers coming into tonight in the first four games of the season have shot the ball 43% from the field, which not terrible but not very impressive either but in this first half Princeton was 16 of 25 from the floor shooting 64 percent that's a blistering pace and Princeton can't really expect to necessarily shoot 64 percent from the game but a big part of the reason why though is the Tigers have had some great looks inside extremely good passing 11 assists on 16 made field goals that it was a stellar job of distributing the ball, and the assists have come from five different players, highlighted by TJ Bray, the senior captain, who has five assists. So with the great passing, Princeton has been able to make up for only shooting three of 10, 30% from three-point line, and Princeton has been five of five from the free throw line. And you compare that with George Mason, and the Patriots aren't doing a terrible job of shooting the ball. George Mason so far, 9 of 20 from the field, 45%. Most of the time you would take that, but George Mason, a team not really noted for shooting the ball very well from three-point land. On the season, coming into this one, the Patriots have made less than five threes a game, and you check that over with Princeton, which on the air has made more than 10 threes a game. And so in this first half, it's George Mason that's one of six from behind the three-point line, 16%. So even though Princeton hasn't lit it up from distance, George Mason, not known for that, hasn't done it either. And then George Mason has left some points at the line, only four of eight shooting free throws so far. Looking at the rebounding numbers, the Tigers have out-rebounded George Mason 13 to nine. Not a whole lot of action on the glass so far for either side, and it's been Hans Brace who has four boards for Princeton. And the high man on the glass for George Mason has been Sharon Wright with four as well. But maybe there haven't been as many missed shots because both teams have shot it well. And then both teams have really thrown the ball around loosely. Ten turnovers for George Mason. So credit Princeton's defense for part of that. And also the Patriots just a bit sloppy. Princeton hasn't exactly been clean with it either. Either The Tigers have turned it over seven times so far on the season. Princeton averages only ten turnovers a game. So on track right now to surpass that. But still 20 minutes to clean things up individually so far with the balance scoring for Princeton it's TJ Bray not only does he have a game high five assists also leading the way in points with nine even three rebounds for the do-it-all player who's so efficient four of four from the field including one of one from three-point land TJ Bray what a big addition it is to have him in the lineup again for the Tigers after he missed the first three games of the season with a hand injury. But now with Bray, for the time being at least, comes off the bench. Princeton has basically seven guys who are starter caliber. Only five can see the court at the start of the game. So what a lift to have TJ Bray coming in off of the bench. Besides Bray's nine points, Princeton's received seven from Denton Kuhn, along with six from Ben Hazel, five each from Jimmy Sherbert and Will Barrett, four for Hans Brace, who is kind of quiet, Pete Miller, a very nice spark off the bench. The freshman big man with four points. Chris Clement 
and Spencer Weiss both playing but not scoring in the backcourt for Princeton. On the other side for George Mason, Sherrod right their leading score, averaging 15 points a game on the year, more than 16 a year ago. He had nine in the first half, so he's on track for just about his typical production. Brian Allen with seven points for George Mason. And then that's the only two players that George Mason has with more than five points so far in the first half. And mentioned that right with four rebounds. No one else with more than two rebounds for George Mason. So it's been Princeton with five steals using the defense to transition into the offense and build up a 40 to 23 lead here in the first half at Jadwin Gym as the Tigers seek a four in one start. As it is here, Princeton at three and one. It's the best start for the Tigers in four seasons and trying to keep it going and improve to three and oh at home at Jadwin here in the young campaign. So we'll take a timeout now. Uh, the halftime show brought to you by Robert Wood Johnson Health System. The official hospital system of Princeton University Athletics will step aside and when we come back, we'll have the Tigers spotlight. That's next on uh, the Tigers Athletics, Nelligan Sports Radio 103.3 WPRB. John Nolan back here at Jadwin Gym where Princeton leads George Mason 40 to 23 in a non-conference tilt a couple of nights before Thanksgiving. Grateful to have you along as here we are on the Robert Wood Johnson halftime show. And we'll check a look at what's going on with the Hampton Inn out of town scoreboard. Well, in top 25 action right now, Syracuse leads Cal, the number eight team in the nation. Syracuse up on Cal, 76-66 out of the Maui Invitational. Early action, St. Louis up 7-5 over number 10, Wisconsin, Connecticut, 74. Loyola, Maryland, 61, late second half. A final score already in top 25 play as Gonzaga with a big time win over Chaminade in Hawaii, 113-81. And later tonight, it's number 12, Wichita State hosting BYU. And number 18, Baylor taking on Dayton. That game is also as part of the Maui Invitational. About seven hours behind us time-wise in Hawaii. Here, it's Princeton 40, George Mason 23 at the half. And we'll check now the Hampton and out-of-town Ivy League score updates as well. And elsewhere, other non-conference games, Yale on the road at Lafayette. It's 70 to 64, the Bulldogs with the lead on the road. And that's a Leopards team that Princeton saw here on Wednesday evening. And the Tigers escaped with an 81-80 overtime victory. Elsewhere in Ivy League play right now, Penn at home at the Palestra leads Niagara at 76 to 50, just more than four minutes to go in that one. And then only other Ivy game in non-conference action tonight at home, Columbia improved to four and three on the season. And three and one in New York City with a 61-47 victory over America. Take another time out here on the Robert Wood Johnson Health System halftime show. It's Princeton 40. And George Mason, 23, you're listening to Princeton basketball from Nelligan Sports on 103.3 FM, WPRB, Princeton. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching, where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future, where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans. A university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. 
Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all-new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices, all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programming. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League digital network. Back here on the Robert Wood Johnson Halftime Show. Both sides back on the floor right now, warming up for the second half with Princeton leading George Mason 40 to 23. Glad to have you with us here and hope you're safe inside, away from the cold and wet weather and preparing for the Thanksgiving holiday coming up on Thursday. Before the start of the second half now, let's check the Tiger Spotlight presented by Ariel Investments. And we'll get a look at what's going on elsewhere in the world of Princeton sports tonight. Well, I told you this is a double header, hence the 8 o'clock start here. Earlier this evening, it was Princeton women's basketball hosting St. Joseph's. And the Tigers fell to 2-3 and three on the season, suffering a tough loss, 74-65, against a St. Joe's team that was in the NCAA tournament last year and is now 5-1 and one on the season. So Courtney Banghart and her group now prepare to head out west for a trip to the state of Oregon over the weekend. They'll take on Portland State on Saturday and then Oregon on Sunday. And then the only other Tigers team in action tonight elsewhere on the Princeton campus. Princeton women's ice hockey going up against a top 10 opponent in Quinnipiac. And the Tigers women's ice hockey team 5-4-1 so far this season. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe so far with Quinnipiac. That game's 1-1, and they are late in the third period. Meanwhile, here at John Wood, it's Princeton 40, George Mason 23. Second half is coming up in just a couple of moments. We'll take our final time out here at the Robert Wood Johnson Halftime Show, and when we return, it's second half from John Princeton 40, George Mason 23. From Nelligan Sport, this is Princeton Tiger Basketball on 103.3 FM WPRB Princeton.
Welcome to the second half here at Chadwin Gym. Princeton leads George Mason 40 to 23. And just out of the gate here in action in the second half. And Princeton picks up the first foul of the half. And it's called away from the ball. And it's against Hans Brace, his third. And so quickly, here in the first minute of the second half, Brace has to head back to the bench with three fouls. Good news, though, for the Tigers. Now as Pete Miller comes in to replace Brace, is that Miller had a nice first half. We told you four points. Also had a really pretty assist. And out he sees extended time again with Brace in foul trouble. Princeton 40, George Mason 23. It's the Patriots from the Atlantic 10. It's their first year in that conference with the ball on the right Johnny side. Williams. And a deuce from the left block in for Johnny Williams. And it's a 15-point game. Some token pressure in the backcourt from George Mason as Princeton brings it across with Jimmy Sherburn orchestrating the offense. He's joined in the backcourt by Ben Hazel and Spencer Weiss. It's Miller at one post position along with Will Barrett. Sherburn lobs right block for Miller who got bumped and he took the contact and traveled. Miller was hoping to receive a foul. Instead, it's another Princeton turnover. The Tigers gave it away seven times in the first half and now one here in half number two. We're 90 seconds into the second half and Princeton leads George Mason 40 to 25. A couple of teams with only one loss on the young season. George Mason four and one, Princeton three and one. Gerard Wright curls around his screen and drives to the rim right side and makes a runner. 40 to 27, a 4 0 spurt from the Patriots. Wright certainly has scored. His career high is 29, and now he's in double figures with 11. Spencer Weiss drives the right lane, shovels a pass up top for Barrett. Near corner, it's Ben Hazel. Princeton patrols on the left side. Hazel drives left lane, puts up a runner with the left hand, no good, but he drew a foul. First foul of the second half against George Mason, and it goes against the 6'8 sophomore and the skilled big man from Serbia, Marko Gujnicic. First free throw is good for Hazel. It is still perfect at the charity stripe so far this season. Hazel came into this one, four of four from the line. Now four for four in this game alone. And Princeton extends its lead back to 15 with 17.50 to go here in the second half. Allen, high right wing, cross court for right. Back to Allen on the right wing. Dribbles behind the back, hip high. Now a feed down low, right post, and a shot off the backboard. Too strong for Gujanichi. And the rebound down to Princeton. Tigers ball in the home white jerseys with a black Nike swoosh at the left shoulder. Sherbert bounces and goes shoulder high as he slips and goes down to a knee. 15 on the shot clock for Princeton. TJ Bray throws far corner for Hazel. Picks up his dribble in front of his own bench. Eight on the shot clock for Sherbert. Drives the ball. Left side puts up an acrobatic fadeaway. No good off the backboard, but he drew a foul. An unconventional shot on the run by Jimmy Sherburn. And the senior draws a foul. Second of the second half and second individually against Corey Edwards for George Mason. So here's a pair for Jimmy Sherburn. Maybe through the first four games of the season. Eight of eight from the line. The highest number of makes without a miss in all of the Ivy League. And Sherburn, pure on the first. Sherburn in his first couple of seasons here at Princeton never started, but he's been in the opening lineup now, five straight here in 2013. And a year after missing the entire season with a shoulder injury, he's been a heady senior leader for the Tigers. Makes the second two, now quickly right side. George Mason draws contact at a foul. Continues to be a story in college basketball early on in the 2013-14 season. An increased number of foul calls. George Mason inbound underneath and a lob for Gerard Wright who skies and puts it in. 
44-29. Princeton still a fairly comfortable lead. And the ball, full court pressure from George Mason. Denton Kuhn dribbling against Sherrod Wright, who jars the bar loose. Kuhn comes up with it, gets just across half court in the nick of time as the shot clock is at 25. Kuhn, high left wing, picks up the dribble, gives to Sherburn behind the back dish for Hazel, whose layup is pinned off of the backboard by Williams. On the go comes George Mason, and Sherrod Wright lays it in with the right hand. A shoulder shake from Wright. And it cuts Princeton's lead to 13. And the Tigers call a timeout with 16-12 to go. Here in the second half, it's Princeton 44, George Mason 31. And we'll step aside now. The Tigers up by 13 from Nelligan Sports. This is Princeton Tiger basketball on 103.3 FM, WPRB Princeton. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future, where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service, where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans, a university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all-new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices, all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programs. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League Digital Network. For quick and easy banking from First Choice Bank, Mercer County residents can now open an account online and take advantage of First Choice Bank's great rates, personal or business, checking or savings. Your new account is just a few clicks away at firstchoice-bank.com. After the Princeton timeout, Tigers basketball, full court pressure from George Mason. Four minutes in, half number two, Princeton leads by 13. Hazel bounces in front of his own bench, crosses over as he's picked up by Allen. Cross court pass for Bray, back to Hazel. Hans Brace back into the game for the Tigers. He posts up, right block has a mismatch, trying to call for the ball. Instead, high right wing, it's Bray. Skip pass, open three pointer is too strong for Barrett. And the defensive board corralled by George Mason. It was Wright who had the board. And George Mason now quickly from left to right. Patriots trail by 13 and a giveaway. A turnover for Brian Allen. Called for a double dribble. And it brings us to another timeout with 15-31 left. And Princeton leading George Mason 44-31. From Nelligan Sports, this is Princeton Tiger Basketball on 103.3 FM, WPRB Princeton. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching, where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future, where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service, where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants not loans, a university of excellence in athletics, and the arts, and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service, and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programs. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League digital network. After the timeout, 
Jimmy Sherburn will inbound for Princeton on the near side, throws it in the backcourt for TJ Bray. For Princeton, it's Bray in the backcourt with Sherburn, Hazel two, and then down low, it's Hans Brace, who from the right block puts it up off the glass, and it falls. So Brace playing now with three fouls, and he scores to make it 46-31. Allen, high left wing, lobs a pass up top for Johnny Williams, the 6'7 forward. Gives to a cutting Allen in the black paint, and he makes the follow-away jumper right in front of the foul line. And now Allen hangs around in the backcourt to pressure defensively with Sherrod Wright. Princeton leads by 13. Sherburn, coast to coast, gives far corner for Kuhn, up top to Hazel. In front of the Tigers bench to Kuhn, who's harassed tightly by Corey Edwards, the 5'11 pesky point guard. That's one that's been called a hand check oftentimes this year. Left wing three is good for TJ Bray. He doesn't miss. Bray two for two from behind the arc. Hasn't missed a shot yet tonight. And Princeton leads 49-33. Bray's been the leading scorer for the Tigers now with 12 points. 49-33. We've played six minutes in the second half. Edwards, a bounce pass right wing for Allen. Guarded by Bray. Allen, shoulder shake, throws on the right side for Wright and a blocking foul called against Ben Hazel. His head coach, Mitch Henderson, squatting down on the far sideline, clapping his hands together. He didn't have a problem with Hazel's defense that time. Wright's a very difficult guy to defend. And Hazel did a good job of keeping him in front, albeit with a hand check. Hans Brace comes out and Pete Miller, the freshman, back in, replacing the sophomore. 13.52 left. Princeton up by 16 as the Tigers try to improve to 4-1 and one and make it three consecutive victories. Only blemish so far, the setback at Butler a couple of Saturday nights ago. Allen bounces to the foul line. We have a whistle away from the ball. And a foul called against the Tigers, Denton Kuhn. Well, away from the ball, reached in. So that's the second foul against Kuhn. And for Princeton, it's foul number four in this second half. Brace, the only significant Tiger with three fouls at this point. The Patriots in green and gold on the right side. Operate with Allen, right wing, who drives right lane and makes an uncontested layup. Jimmy Sherburn got screened. And Allen was all alone. Now on the inbounds pass, it's poked out of bounds in its Princeton basketball. Paul Hewitt going all the way down to the baseline to plead his case that it was last off of Ben Hazel, who is the intended target of the inbound pass from Bray. And now we have a stoppage for a moment. As it was Allen who hit the deck in the far corner, chasing after the loose ball. He pops back up. And so it's Princeton ball with 13-22 remaining second half and the Tigers up 49-35. George Mason all-time 4-0 against Ivy League opponents, most recently taking down Brown in 2011. So Princeton right searching to be the first Ivy team to knock off the Patriots who have been in the NCAA tournament six times, and most famously in 2006, when they went all the way to the Final Four as an 11 seed, a team that many at the time didn't even think deserved to make the tournament. And sure enough, they upset Michigan State, North Carolina, Wichita State, and then got to the Final Four by beating UConn in Washington, D.C. Princeton beats full court pressure from George Mason, T.J. Bray, High right wing, skip pass, Hazel, open, near corner, three, and he hits! Ben Hazel. ben Hazel from long range, and Princeton with a big three to go in front, 52-35. We're inside of 13 minutes to go. Now Hazel defensively, guarding high left wing, and a three-pointer down for Von Gray. Von Gray, a junior from North Jersey, who's shooting 
46% from three for George Mason, the best percentage of anyone on the roster. He makes that, and it forces, well, actually it leads George Mason to call a timeout as Paul Hewitt wants to get everyone on the same page and then also set up full court pressure out of the timeout. 12.48 remaining, second half, Princeton 52, and George Mason 38. Taking a look at some of the numbers at this point, the Tigers who shot 64% in the first half. There is still firing sharply in the second half as well. Fresh off of a Ben Hazel three. Princeton has only made five threes in the game. They average more than 10 made threes per game through the first four this season. But overall, the Tigers better than 55% from the floor. And Princeton manages to easily beat full court pressure from George Mason. Tigers were expecting, and that's what they worked on in practice yesterday. Bray guns a pass up top for Denton Kuhn. Back to Bray, backdoor feed, right block, Sherburn. He looks for Hazel in the corner, but instead stolen by right. George Mason left to right, right in the paint, puts up a shot, no good. He falls down on the black paint, and he's fouled. Brings us to a stoppage with 12-26. It's Princeton 52. And George Mason, 38. And two free throws now for Sharon Wright, George Mason's leading scorer. Wright with more than 1,100 points in his career. He was second team all CAA, Colonial Athletic Conference, or Association last year. Now, George Mason though, it's first year as a member of the Atlantic 10. Now at this point, still in non-conference action. First free throw is good for Wright, he has another coming. Wright played in high school in Mount Vernon in Westchester County, New York, not far from New York City. Same high school where NBA star Ben Gordon played, a true pipeline for a lot of Division I talent, Wright being the latest. And he has had a nice career at George Mason, redshirt senior now. Missed his sophomore year with a shoulder injury, but is someone who has improved his scoring from five points to 10 points to more than 16 points year by year. And now as a redshirt senior, the go-to star for George Mason. He misses the second free throw. Rebound knocked out of bounds by George Mason. Princeton on the left side, and Pete Miller is called for an offensive foul. Drawn by, who else? Sherrod Wright, doing it at both ends. It's the first against Pete Miller, and the sixth against Princeton here in half number two from here on out with 12.20 to go. George Mason will be in the bonus. Not what Princeton would like to see as it tries to protect a 52-39 lead here at Jadwin Gym. Wright gives a bounce pass up top for Okoloji. 6'8 junior from Brooklyn. Gives on the far side for Wright. Works his way left elbow. A leaner no good. Rebound is slapped around and it's seized by Sherburn for Princeton. And now a whistle as Sherburn starts to take it down court. Pauses things with 11.56. And we have two of the officials right now, Lionel Butler and Justin Porterfield discussing things at center court. And they're going to come over our direction and check out the monitor. Eleven fifty-six to go in the second half. It's 52-39. Princeton leads George Mason as the officials go to the monitor right now to check something out. So we'll use this time right now to reset things. 11.56 to go here in the second half and Princeton leading George Mason 52 to 39. It's been a nice start for the Tigers who led at the half by 17 points, 40 to 23. George Mason has stuck around though here in the second half. Again, a team that's four and one on the year and coming off of a bad loss at Iono and they lost 89-73. So we'll step aside now, 11.56 to go. Here in half number two, Princeton 52 and George Mason, 39, with the officials checking things out at the monitor. We'll step aside from Nelligan Sports. This is Princeton Tiger Basketball on 103.3 FM, WPRB Princeton.
last lay is a foul at number 31, Pete Miller, his second, and that is the seventh on the side. Back here at Jadwin Gym, John Nolan filling in for Derek Jones tonight. Glad to have you along and wishing you a happy Thanksgiving week. The officials came over to the monitor to check out potential foul call and just announced right now a foul against Princeton's Pete Miller, the 6'10 freshman. That happened as Jimmy Sherburn for the Tigers was bouncing the ball up court, away from the ball. Did not see what Miller did, but after the officials looked it over, they assess a foul to Miller. That's now the seventh foul of the half against Princeton. Although it's an offensive foul, it should be at least, and so George Mason won't be shooting free throws. But it has everything at a standstill right now as both head coaches for Princeton, Mitch Henderson, and for George Mason, Paul Hewitt, who once led Georgia Tech to a national championship game in 2004 against UConn. Both coaches right now conferencing tonight one of the head official, Lionel Butler. And you know, they will say that George Mason gets a one and one here, and it's Anali Okoloji who gets two free, or one and one. Seventh foul of the half against Princeton, and it's a one and one now for the 55% free throw shooter, Okoloji. And the rancher junior from Brooklyn makes the first. He's 10th on the team in terms of minutes per game so far this season, but has played in every game. And with George Mason missing a couple of starters tonight, he is seeing time here in the second half. We're inside of 12 minutes. Uncle Oji made the first, missed the second. It's 52-40, Tigers with the lead on the left side. TJ Bray, hip high dribble, right hand. Feeds up top for Hans Brace. He plays with three fouls. Brace dishes to Bray. Near corner three, Sherburn, no. He passes instead in the paint for Brace, who's called for a travel. Right on that Princeton University seal in the black paint. Brace shuffled his feet as he received the pass. And it's a Princeton turnover. Right back to George Mason here. And the Patriots with a three-pointer. Now that they're known for threes, they can make this a single-digit game again. Princeton has been up by double digits for the entirety of the second half. Okoloji attacks against Brace, who plays soft with three fouls. And Okoloji scores over him with the right hand. Ten-point game, 52-42, 11-15 remaining. Full court, man-to-man -man from George Mason. And Sherrod Wright hangs out in the backcourt to make things pesky for Ben Hazel. He gets into the forecourt, hands off for Bray, the senior captain from Wisconsin. Motions out of play with the right hand. Dribble handoff for Weiss. Back for Bray in front of his own bench. Skip pass, near corner, Sherbin drives left baseline. And there's a foul on the floor. Foul against Vaughn Gray, a 6'5 guard. First against Gray, and the fourth of the half against George Mason. So the Patriots are shooting free throws. Princeton not yet in the bonus. Hazel, catch and shoot off the inbound, and he puts in a three. 55-42, George Mason racing from left to right, and a foul called. Or no foul, but a kick ball. No foul, but a kick ball as Allen was speeding down court. And Allen it appeared just lost control, but he ended up dribbling it off the foot of Hazel. And so it's a kickball against Hazel and the Tigers. And George Mason with an inbound underneath the basket on the right side. And we have a foul called before the inbound pass is thrown. And now the Jadwin Faithful here, throwing a bit frustrated with the high number of fouls being called in this half. Second half hasn't had as much of a rhythm to it as the first half did. One and one coming up. Now for Marco Jujanicic. 13 point Princeton lead. And now one and one for the 16, 224 pound sophomore from Serbia. Knocks down the first. Gujanicic has international experience playing for Serbia's U20 and U19 national team in both European Championship and in the World Championship over the last couple of summers. He misses the second, and now a foul called on the fight for the rebound. This time it goes against 
Sherrod Wright and George Mason. It's Wright second and George Mason's fifth of the second half. Tigers inbounding right side as Princeton works from right to left. Hazel plays point guard. Not a natural point guard, but he's competent enough to handle the ball and feeds on the right post for Hans Brace, who's backing down Okoloji, and he draws a foul. So in the last two minutes of game action, we've had at least a half dozen whistles, and we're stopped again with 10.27 to go. Princeton 55, George Mason 43. Inbound underneath the left basket for Kuhn in the black paint. Bounce pass for Brace. He's been plagued by fouls tonight, hasn't really been too involved in the offense. He posts up left side, but with the ball, it's Bray. Guns a pass for Kuhn. Now feeds to Brace, and we have a blocking foul in the paint as Brace wasn't even attacking the rim, and it's back to the basket. And it's called against Von Gray, his second, the seventh of the half against George Mason. And now Hans Brace is at the free throw line. It's one and one, that foul was on the floor. So both teams now in the bonus with 10-10 to go. This could be a lengthy second half. Brace now with the first of a one and one. Nothing but nylons earn another. 56-43 Princeton. Tigers so far have been led by 14 points from Ben Hazel as he has matched his career high that he set last week on Wednesday night here at home against Lafayette. Hazel with 14, Bray with 12, and Kuhn with seven for Princeton. Brace misses the back end of the one and one, and the rebound down to George Mason in green and gold. Patriots ball on the right side. Top of the key three, no good for Gray. Offensive board for Guccinici, and he's fouled going up, makes it, and the harm has shot an old-fashioned three-point play. And that goes against Hans Brace, his fourth. So trouble here for Princeton. Brace comes out of the game, and he's replaced again by Pete Miller. Miller a little bit taller than Brace, 6'10 versus 6'8", but Miller not as much muscle, only a freshman. And so a tough spot here for Miller, who rotted a nice spark in the first half. But things a little bit more difficult in half number two. Free throw for Gujanichi, which is good. And that makes it a 10-point game, 56-46. Tigers have led by as many as 17. They're up by that many at halftime. Now Sherbird at half court. He throws a pass and is fouled as he was trying to find Miller, who beat everyone down court. And this is going to turn into a foul shooting contest for the final 9.47. Foul goes against Gujanichi, his third, the eighth against George Mason. And it's one and one for Sherburn, who hasn't missed a free throw yet this season. Bends and extends. And he bricks it off the back of the rim. So it remains a 10-point Tigers lead. Patriots ball. Man-to-man -man defense for Princeton. And George Mason plays with two down on the blocks. It's Gujanichi who gives to a cutting Williams who goes up for a dunk and he's fouled. Well, there was a nice pass right there by the Serbian. He is a good passer for his height at 6'8". And he found Williams slipping to the rim on the right side and he's fouled by Miller now Miller with three fouls sends Will Barrett over to the scorers table to check in Williams 4 of 4 from the line so far this season makes the first free throw still has another Miller comes out along with Sherburn and Chris Clement comes in to replace Sherburn's ball handling, and Barrett comes in to replace Miller's size. But while Miller likes to play down low, Barrett, the guy who prefers being on the perimeter. Second free throw, good two for Williams, and it's an eight point game, 56-48. The Patriots are cut into what was a 17 point Princeton advantage. 
Still nine and a half minutes to go in half number two. Both teams starting to get into foul trouble. Bray at midcourt, guarded by Patrick Holloway. Has a few inches on him. Bounces right side, and now Princeton resets between the rings. It's Kuhn. Hands off, straight on for Bray. Driving, right lane, puts up a runner, good, and the foul. High off of the glass, it drops. And it's the ninth foul of the half against George Mason. It goes against Marco Gujanicic. It's his fourth, so now each side's best big man has four fouls. So Hans Brace is on the bench for Princeton. And now before the free throw for Bray, Gujanicic goes over to the green and gold bench. Princeton back up by double digits. And the left-handed shooter's free throw is good. 59-48. Princeton leads by 11. Exactly nine minutes remaining here at Jadwin. Allen, who left the game earlier with a banged up shoulder back in, he feeds down low and Williams is called for a travel at the left block. Between the fouls and the turnovers, there has been a little flow to this second half. But Princeton has still managed to hold on to the lead, 59-48. George Mason, as they've done all night long, pressures the inbound. Tigers get it into Bray, who walks it across half court. Slings the pass, far corner for Barrett. Back to Bray. Tigers work it around the perimeter, 20 on the shot clock. Clement, right-handed pass for Bray in front of his bench on the right wing. Barrett. In the corner, chest pass for Bray between the circles. 10 on the shot clock, Bray to the foul line. Kicks out, Barrett rifles a three, around and out, and the rebound down to Okoloji for George Mason. He collided with Princeton's Denton Kuhn, who's slow to get down court. Five on four, Okoloji drives right lane, scores, and the harm. Foul against Chris Clement. Well, the six foot guard trying to help right out down low, but to no avail. His first foul, Princeton has already committed 10 fouls in the half. But here, an and one try for Okoloji, who off of the bench has been a key player tonight for George Mason. Okoloji. Converts on the three-point play, makes the free throw. It's an eight-point game, 59-51, 8.15 to go. Little Parrott at 6'10", but so athletic and with a solid handle, takes it up to midcourt and then finds the point guard, Clement. The senior barks out a play, dribbles with the right hand, bends off the defender, Allen, with the left. Goes towards midcourt on the Tiger logo for Bray. Dishes off right wing for Clement. 15 on the shot clock. Bray, hesitation. Pulls up for a three in front of his bench. Off iron, no good. And the rebound control by Sherrod Wright and George Mason. Wright gives to Allen. Comes down, thought about an open three instead. Dishes right side for Wright. He drives, puts it up, good, plus a foul. DJ Bray thought he drew a charge, but instead it's an and one for Sherrod Wright. We'll have a free throw after this timeout. 7.33 to go, second half. Princeton leads George Mason 59-53, but what was once a 17-point lead is now a much closer game. It's gonna be an exciting finish here at Jadwin. From Nelligan Sports, this is Princeton Tiger Basketball on 103.3 FM WPRB Princeton. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching. Where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future. Where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service. Where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans. A university of excellence in athletics, in the arts, and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices. All without the need for an app. 
choose to watch only your favorite school's events, or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programming. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League digital network. 1% from the field in the game, George Mason 55%, but sorry, the second half may very well end up being foul trouble. 7.33 left, both sides will be in the double bonus from here on out. BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine, two miles east of Route 1 on Quaker Bridge Road in 24-7 at www.princetonbmw.com. Shrod right on the right side. Knocks down a free throw that finishes off a three-point play. Second straight three-point play for George Mason. It's a five-point game as close as it's been since midway through the first half. Tigers in a white. Have led by as many as 17. Hazel into the forecourt. Passes on the right side for Sherburn. Away from the ball. Another stoppage with a whistle. Goes against Okoloji. His fourth, another 6'8 player with four fouls now for George Mason. And that's the 10th team foul of the half against the Patriots. So TJ Bray, the Tigers senior captain, gets two. His first, short. Bray in his first action of the season Saturday at Rice didn't go to the line. His second is pure. 60 to 54, Princeton leads George Mason. The Tigers three and one on the year. George Mason four and one. First ever meeting between these two. Good mid-major contest in New Jersey here tonight. George Mason operates on the right side. Allen, high right wing, lobs a pass, far side right, hoists a three, it's good. And the George Mason bench standing up. It's a three point game, 60 to 57. Full court pressure now from the Patriots. Gray inbounds to Kuhn. He's harassed in the backcourt by Gray. Gets it across half court, and he's fouled. There's the hand check. The officials, you have to give them credit for being consistent. Even with 6.47 to go, both teams in the double bonus. They certainly aren't swallowing the whistles yet. And so two free throws now for Denton Kuhn. So George Mason, which all season long has been plagued by slow starts, especially in their loss at Iona Saturday when they fell behind 34-5 in that first half. Didn't put themselves in as big of a hole here tonight. And they have chipped away. And now a four-point game after Kuhn makes the first free throw. The second is short. And the defensive board down to the Patriots. Four-point game. Allen, left wing three. Strong. And the rebound down to Barrett for Princeton. Outlets for Kuhn. Tigers trying to slow the pace down here after George Mason has picked up its urgency in the second half. Six and a half minutes remaining. Princeton 61, George Mason 57. Kuhn posting up right side. Lobs up top for Barrett. Now it's Bray in front of the Princeton bench. Bray backing down his defender. Right post, kicks out for Kuhn. Thought about the three, hands off for Bray. Bray drives right lane, five on the shot clock, a runner no good, offensive board for Bray, mid-air, finds Sherburn up top, and the Tigers reset. Big offensive board for TJ Bray, and Princeton on that sequence right there, milked the shot clock down under five, and they look to show patience here again. Inside is six minutes, Tigers clinging to a four-point lead. Sherburn a pass to the far corner, is knocked out of bounds by Johnny Williams, the length of the 6'7 forward. And it's Princeton basketball inbounding on the baseline. TJ Bray raises his left hand high, motions out. The inbounds play call. Tosses outside of the arc, right wing for Kuhn. Back to Bray in the corner in front of his own bench. 10 on the ticker. Bray up top for Barrett. Weaves his way into the paint, scores, wave it off. Offensive foul against Barrett. It was Okoloji who has four fouls and is still in the game, and he draws a charge down low with 5.32 to go. Princeton 61, George Mason 57, and in control of the ball now. 
That's the third foul against Barrett. With the offensive foul, the bonus doesn't matter for George Mason. No free throws. And now the Patriots go from left to right. And make it a one possession game here, 61-57. In front of his own bench, it's Allen. Dishes far corner for Wright, who attacks and draws contact, and a foul. Two free throws coming up for Sherrod Wright. It's a parade to the free throw line. The foul called against Denton Kuhn, his fourth for Princeton. As Hans Brace already with four fouls, he comes over to the scorer's table. And Mitch Henderson's going to roll the dice. For George Mason, meanwhile, it's Anali Okoloji with four fouls, who also comes in. He replaces Johnny Williams, so one big out for another. For Princeton, Pete Williams comes out. Or Miller, pardon me. And he's replaced by Brace. Five on the floor for the Tigers in the backcourt. Sherburn, Hazel, and forwards Gray and Kuhn, and Brace the big man. Second free throw, good as well for Wright. 61-58 with 5.13 left. Full court, man-to-man -man defense from George Mason. Tigers get it into Kuhn. Races down court, bounce pass, right block, and Brace misses the layup, but he's fouled. Hit in the head by Okoloji. It'll be two free throws for Brace. Tigers leading by three with 5.08 to go, and that does it for the redshirt junior from Brooklyn, Anali Okoloji. Both sides retreat to their benches right now as they get time to reset after Okoloji fouls out and Paul Hewitt can figure out how to reset his lineup. 5.08 to go, Princeton 61 and George Mason 58. Today's food gallery Player of the game will have that coming up later on. Right now, the Robert Wood Johnson Health System is committed to a state of better health and well-being. From the routines to the most complex medical conditions, each day in every way, the system is working wonders throughout the region. The Robert Wood Johnson Health System is proud to be the official hospital system of Princeton University Athletics. Learn more now at rwjhealthsystem.org. It's Brace at the line, shooting two. And the 6'8 German natives, first is no good, in and out. 61-58 Tigers who led by 17 at the half. Second for Brace, gets a friendly roll off the front iron. And now with the make, that's critical because Mitch Henderson can sub Brace out on defense here and bring Pete Miller back in. The freshman being thrust into a pressure situation here in just game number five of his career. Wright drives right lane and puts it in off the glass. Sherrod Wright is having a monster Sherrod second half. No surprise for the redshirt senior, the leading scorer. Two point game. Princeton outlets on the left side. Miller left block, he goes up and is fouled by Williams. Williams incredulous. He thought he contested the Miller shot cleanly, but instead he is called for George Mason's umpteenth foul of the second half. Both sides have long been in the bonus. We still have 4.44 to go, and it's two free throws for Miller, who is in the act of shooting. Miller so far in the young season, three of five from the line. He misses the first. Princeton was so good at the free throw line in the first half, didn't miss, but now all of a sudden here in the second half, having some issues. Started the game nine for nine from the line. And Miller's second, no good. Rebound, George Mason. They can tie or take the lead. 4.35 left. It's Princeton 62, and George Mason here on the road 60. Sherrod Wright. It's been the hot hand for George Mason. He dribbles to the foul line. Kicks it out right wing, but first he travels. Wright with his right hand points to his chest, tells his teammates, my bad. He turns it over to Princeton with 4.26 left, and the Tigers right now hanging on to a 62-60 lead. Same full court pressure from George Mason as Princeton has seen all night. Van Hazel, the junior calmly takes it down court, dishes on the far side. 
for Kuhn. He gives to Bray high left wing. Now Brace who's back into the game. Sherbert in far quarter. Gives to Brace who can't hold on at the foul line. Turned over to George Mason. Again here, the Patriots in green and gold with a chance to tie or take the lead. Inside of four minutes, a chorus of defense from the Princeton fan and fans on hand here at Jadwin. Right, left side, baseline, jumper, strong, and Bray comes down for the Princeton board. Bray takes it down court himself, crosses over the dribble. Motions out of play with his right hand. Brace, dribble handoff for Bray. Bounce pass, right block, Brace lays it in oh, off the glass. A big bucket and a big assist right there by Bray, the senior captain. 64-60, the Tigers lead with 3.20 remaining. Princeton played in overtime last time here at Jadwin on Wednesday against Lafayette. Could be going there again, they hope not. Right in the lane, and he draws a foul. Two free throws. For Sherrod Wright, when we return, 3.14 to go. It'll be an exciting finish at Jadwin. With 3.14 to go, Princeton 64, George Mason 60, and at the line from Nelligan Sports, this is Princeton Tiger Basketball on 103.3 FM, WPRB Princeton. Princeton University, a research university with a special commitment to teaching, where scholars and students learn from the past and look into the future where students from many backgrounds prepare for leadership and lives of service, where more than half the student body receives financial aid and grants, not loans, a university of excellence in athletics and the arts and in all that it does. Princeton University, in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. Introducing the Ivy League Digital Network. Now fans can access live events and exclusive content from across the league in an all-new video platform. Watch select games in HD on PCs, mobile, and tablet devices, all without the need for an app. Choose to watch only your favorite school's events or upgrade to a conference-wide package and gain access to all Ivy League live events and on-demand programming. The completely redesigned experience includes an easy-to-navigate interface, live stats, and social media integration. Sign up for a subscription package today to take full advantage of the Ivy League Digital Network. Set after the game with your ticket sub, satisfy your sweet tooth at Thomas Sweet. Back in Jadwin, 314 remaining. Princeton 64, George Mason 60 in a battle of mid-major foes meeting for the first time. It's John Nolan joined by Noah Savage here. 314 to go. And Noah Princeton here tonight. Jumped out to that 17-point lead at the half, but a feisty George Mason team has battled back thanks to the whistle. Right, and I mean, the rest have taken over this game, and it's almost getting ridiculous both ways. Everything's a foul. Minimal contact is a foul. If, if these teams were playing pickup against each other, there'd be a fight happening right now with all these fouls being called. It's kind of taken away from the game, I and mean, they've got to do something to find a middle ground between the new rule emphasis and, like, calling a reasonable game. Well, Sherrod Wright has taken advantage of the rules and he makes both free throws to make it a two-point game right leads all scorers with 27 and after the make george mason sets up its full court defense 64 62. this is as close as george mason has been since the early going they've chipped into the lead but have not been able to tie or take a lead coon pumps on a left wing three drives to the basket plays it in with the right hand off the glass 66-62, the Tigers extend the lead back to four. And George Mason from left to right. And great job by Kuhn to slow down and not charge right there. Tigers with foul trouble, trying to get a stop. In the far corner, it's right. Again, the hot hand. He has 27 points to lead all scorers. Up top for Allen. He has 11 points, he weaves his way, left lane, shot no good off the backboard, rebound, swatted around, and Brace steers it for the Tigers. And that's, that shows you how important team box out is. That, that it took two or three box outs by the Tigers to secure that rebound. And right now, George Mason pressuring the Tigers. They've gotta look for those back doors to relieve this pressure. 2-10 to go, Princeton leads by four. Big possession, Bray in front of his bench, hoists a three, strong, and George Mason corrals the board. The guard, Allen, outlets, high for Gray. He drives right side and puts in a right-handed layup. 
and a timeout called by George Mason. You could tell the experience from T.J. Bray, the leader, the only captain on this team. He shot that wide open three, but he knew how important it was, but it led to this fast break by George Mason, who were able to score. It was Gray with a nice step through Euro move. But you could tell that T.J. Bray for a second was like, oh, this is a little bit early in the shot clock. Should I shoot this basketball? We said, all right, I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to shoot it to make it. And that's what he did, and I think that uh, Princeton's happy with that shot. Two minutes left to go, 10 million fouls so far in the game, and Princeton needs to continue doing what they're doing, only shooting wide open threes, and then driving and posting and looking to get to the free throw line. Well, if he makes that there, it's a dagger instead. As it turns out, George Mason scores. Paul Ewan's time out there. George Mason with two timeouts remaining. Princeton still with three timeouts in Mitch Anderson's pocket. Tigers 66, George Mason 64, 158 left. Possession arrow, for what it's worth, favors Princeton. That could be key here down the stretch inside of two minutes. And watch this press right now. Princeton's been able to get over the top and get two on ones against it. Van Hazel, a junior who sat out last year, now handling the point on a big possession for the Tigers. Dribbles high left wing, picks it up, looks for help. Hans Brace comes high between the rings. 20 on the shot clock. 140 to go in the game. Princeton leads by two. It's Kuhn between the circles. Bounce pass for Brace. For Hazel, left wing. He drives in the paint. Right-handed shot, no good. Off the rim to the right. And George Mason has the rebound, trailing by two. Allen, stutter step across half court. Goes around a high Williams screen. Gives to Williams. He hands off, and a foul called on TJ Bray outside of the three-point line with 1.21 to go. Princeton leads 66-64, but two free throws now for George Mason that could tie it up for the first time since the early part of the first half. Right, and both teams are frustrated. I mean, every call, both five on the floor, both George Mason and Princeton are turning to the rest and saying, how can that be a foul? I mean, what as a player can you, are you allowed to do on the defensive end under this new officiating regime? Two free throws for Williams, and the first is good. Williams, a 6'8", redshirt senior from Memphis, who before tonight had only taken four free throws all season. Big pressure free throw, could tie the game. It's good. Redshirt senior steps up for George Mason, and we are tied 66 up with 121 to go. Both teams in the bonus, possession arrow favors the Tigers. Chris Clement, the senior off the bench, comes down court and calls a timeout in front of the Princeton bench, and the Tigers will huddle it up here with 115 to go in the game, 29 seconds to go on the shot clock, and we're tied at 66. Right, you've got to take your time here if you're Princeton because they're going to have a chance. George Mason's going to have a chance to get the ball, and then Princeton will have a chance to get it back if they go one and done. So there's no need to take the first available shot. They've got to get the best shot they can with the remaining 29 seconds. As we take a look at the upcoming schedule, though, November 30th at Bucknell, that'll be another, another tough test for the Princeton Tigers. And then they've got FDU, and then one of the best places to play in all of college basketball, but especially the New Jersey rival up at the rack at Rutgers. And Princeton hopes to enter into that stretch. Still with only one loss to its name. The Tigers so far, three and one. The only blemish, a tough three-point loss on the road at Butler. And here being tested against an Atlantic 10 school for in their first year in George Mason. And the Patriots try to also avoid picking up their second loss of the season. So coming out of the timeout, Princeton basketball with 1.15 remaining. We are knotted at 66. So far, the Tigers, if this comes down to free throws, Princeton has shot 67% from the free throw line. 14 of 21, George Mason, 15 of 23, about 65% at the line. This second half has seen 28 combined fouls. 15, or check that out, up that to 16 against Princeton and 13 against George Mason. And with such a tight game, you always look back and you, as a player at those misses, when it comes down to be a one possession game. Tigers have Sherburn running the point. The senior guard passes for TJ Bray on the left wing. Feed down low, Brace, and he sticks it in off the glass with the left hand. 68-66, Princeton leads, 60 seconds to go, and George Mason calls a timeout with 58.9 left. And that's the trust you see between TJ Bray and Hans Brace underneath. Brace with a back door, he brought it almost out to the free throw line. Cut back door, nice overhead pass by TJ Bray. But that kind of pass has been open all half. I mean, George Mason's overplaying. You can get that back door, that's a pressure release. When a, when a team starts pressuring you, 
especially if you're Princeton, you're backdoor you. You gotta say, hey, we're backdoor you. We, we know how to handle this pressure. We're, this is gonna lead to layups for us. Princeton instead has been relying a little bit on, you know, pick and roll as well as handoffs when they have an opportunity to go back door. Coach Henderson drew it up out of the timeout, trusting the senior to the sophomore. Back door for Hans Brace, great play. So Princeton after the brace bucket leads 68-66. Again, in case you missed any of this earlier, Princeton led 40 to 23 at the half. The Tigers shot ran 60% in the first half. But George Mason, to its credit, and with some help from the whistle, has fought back, tied it up. But now it's Princeton 68, George Mason 66. Patriots ball on the right side. Inside of a minute here at Chadwick. It's Gray, a 6'5 guard between the rings. Gives to Wright, the leading scorer in the paint. Shot off the backboard, no good. And Brace has the Princeton rebound. Finds a guard in Kuhn, and the Tigers will slow things down. 40 seconds to go in the game. There's a 10 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Hey, Princeton needs to run the shot clock down, but you saw with George Mason, nothing is a charge in college basketball anymore. Timeout Tigers, Mitch Henderson uses his second to last timeout. Princeton will still have one left. Both sides with one timeout for the final 26.3 seconds. Again, both sides have long been in the double bonus. Possession arrow in favor of Princeton, and it's the Tigers here. They'll drop a play trying to build on a 68-66 lead here at home. Another exciting finish at Chadwick. Right, and we take a look at the passing of TJ Bray. Back door to Hans Brace on a little pick and roll action. I mean, the passing all night long has just been huge for the Tigers. They've, they've done a great job. I mean, one of the big storylines for this uh, season has been losing Ian Hummer, who led the team in assists last year, and the passing of the team. It's actually been a more fluid offense this season so far without the leader, Ian Hummer, but they've been able to step up by sharing the basketball, and the Tigers have been have been uh, able to share the ball. With our apologies to our, our radio listeners, I know some of us aren't seeing the screen, but we're streaming as well, so. The Tigers have done a great job of sharing the ball. You know, I was talking to an alum after one of the last games, and he said, man, this offense looks uh, really fluid this year. Tigers have Bray, Sherburn, Kuhn, Hazel, and Brace. 10 on the shot clock, 20 on the game clock. Princeton with the ball on the left side. Inbound near midcourt to Bray. Goes around a Brace screen, drives right side, puts up a shot with the right hand, and falls. 12.1 seconds to go, Princeton 70, George Mason 66. Allen races down, loses the handle, loose ball with five seconds to go. It's a fight in the black paint and a whistle with 2.6. It's a jump ball, possession arrow to Princeton with 2.6 seconds to go. The Tigers lead 70 to 66. They aren't out of it yet. Check that, not a jump ball, a timeout called by Princeton. A headsy play right there. The Tigers last timeout though, so now you can't use one if you can't get the ball in on the inbound. But a big hustle play right there by Princeton with 2.6 seconds to go to preserve the possession. Right, and that five on TJ Bray's chest. Might as well be a Superman S. He just put the team on his back. He drove to his right, his offhand, and was able to bank it home. That's what you expect out of your senior leader. And TJ Bray has been in a ton of huge spots in his career. Great job by him to step up. And good job, I think, by the coaching staff to just trust him to make a play. Spread the court against George Mason. Get the help out of the way. Put the ball in the hands of one of your best players, if not your best player, and let him be the leader. TJ Bray, 18 points on the night. What a move and what a finish. 2.6, if they inbound this basketball, this contest should be over. Tigers put their best foul shooters on the floor. And the senior captain Bray's the inbounder. Rifles it into Sherburn, who's fouled immediately. 1.9 seconds remain. Two free throws coming up for Jimmy Sherburn. He has missed one free throw so far tonight, but coming into this one, he had the best free throw percentage or the most makes without a miss in all of the Ivy League. He's two for three at the line tonight. And a chance here to put this one in the cooler. 70 to 66, Princeton with 1.9 seconds to go. This could be a big win for the Tigers over George Mason. And Sherburn makes the first, he has another coming. 71-66. All right, and this speaks to the work of Jimmy Sherburn. Two years ago, you wouldn't have thought he's going to be the guy shooting the free throw, and there it is, the announcer jinxes as he misses the second one. But and great win for the Tigers. And the rebound down to George Mason, but it doesn't matter. It's over here at Jadwin. Princeton survives, beats George Mason 71-66.
The Tigers saw a 17-point second-half lead slip away. George Mason tied it in the final two minutes, but Princeton prevails, holds on 71-66. Brace and Bray with some big buckets in the final minute, and the Tigers win it 71-66. What a game here at Jadwin. Right, and again, balanced scoring by the Tigers, which has been a story all year long. I mean, Ben Hazel with 14, Hans Brace with 10, and Denton Kuhn with 10 apiece, and then T.J. Bray with 18. It was, a, it was a t really T.J. Bray put the team on his back first, the big assist inside to Hans Brace, and then the big time drive, finishing off two through the contact of the George Mason defender. What a nice night by T.J. Bray, who, you know, it's only his second game back, who returned to the lineup against Rice. So 71-66, and how good is it to have T.J. Bray back? You may not win this game without his services here tonight. So we'll be back to recap things after a 71-66 Princeton win, a big victory in the non-conference at home against George Mason. We'll be back to wrap things up with the post-game show, take a look at some of the final numbers, and we'll be joined by assistant coach Brian Earl. That's all straight ahead from Nelligan Sports. This is Princeton Tiger Basketball on 103.3 FM, WPRB, Princeton. Nasty outside. Please drive carefully. Drive home safely. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and good night. As far as you know, this isn't wrong.